pleasant meeting with Senator McConnell this morning. He has announced to his caucus that he is willing to have a up or down vote on DHS full funding and some kind of a vote on uh, Collins. The problem is, everybody, I'm waiting to hear from the speaker. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, joining us now is Jed Babin, contributing editor for the American Spectator and former deputy undersecretary of defense in the George H.W. Bush administration. Uh, Jed, welcome back, sir. Thanks, Steve. All right. So, so you know, uh, John Boehner gave a kind of bizarre uh, press conference today. He, he threw a, like, a kiss, and I won't say threw a kiss. He went to one of the reporters who asked him a question about what the House is going to do now with the bill on, uh, on DHS funding. What do you think is going to happen? Uh, is Boehner going to cave like McConnell caved? Of course. That's what they always do. But the real point here is, Steve, it really doesn't matter a whole heck of a lot. Because even if they don't fund DHS, the Transportation Safety Administration is not going to be pulling its people out of the airports. Intelligence is still going to be gathered. The FBI is going to be still working on the job. I, I really don't see that this is any threat to the national security at all. Well, of course, it's going to be presented that it is. It's also going to be presented whether that it's true or not that these people who will remain on the job won't be getting paychecks. So that's going to, you know, they're going to, they're going to talk about all the hardships that these people will face, and they're going to milk it. Yeah, they will. But that's the media and the Democrats. The fact of the matter is every time one of these things happens, everybody gets paid by back pay. All of the people who might get laid off are going to get paid anyway. So it's really just a political kerfuffle. I frankly can't get very excited about it. And yes, after all is said and done, the Republicans will cave, as they always do. Yeah, well, I, 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 I got to tell you, I can't wait to see how this is going to happen, because he's, if he's going to cave, he's got to cave by tomorrow uh, if, to prevent any kind of quote-unquote shutdown or defunding. So he seemed in pretty good spirits for a man who's about to incur the wrath of his own party, or the majority of it, certainly. So we'll see what happens. Uh, let's turn our attention to, uh, to uh, ISIS and the latest uh, strategy or lack thereof. We find out that Jihad John, as he's called, or Jihadi John, and I hate giving them any kind of name like that, but the media has dubbed him that. They all, all of a sudden know who he is. He's a college-educated man. He was Kuwaiti, growing up in London, and uh, you know comes from a good family. It kind of blows a hole uh, coming uh, right on the, uh, in the aftermath of that summit, uh, ter terrorism summit, where they told us that, uh, you know, you got to find these people jobs, get them out of poverty, give them opportunity. This guy had all the opportunity he wanted. Sure. And the opportunity, the only opportunity he wants is to cut people's heads off. These guys are motivated by hate, by an ideology that passes for a religion. And these guys are not going to be satiated by anything except more blood. So there's not a jobs market for jihadis. It's just, it's a ridiculous thing that the president had done with that terrorism summit. It has absolutely no effect on the enemy and quite frankly has no effect on us. If you look at what's going on, even in the media, who's talking about the terrorism summit? It was such a big nothing. There really isn't any result. Of course, the head of the FBI wasn't talking about it. He wasn't invited, but uh, <laughs> which is pretty bizarre. All right, so I'm listening to CNN, watching it rather, this morning, and, and uh, Stephen Israel, the de Democratic congressman, is there, and they talk about Netanyahu's speech, and they finish the interview by saying to him, so are you going to go? And he says, well, I'll be very frank, which is rare for a congressman. And this is just, this is what he said. Um, there's an old saying, don't fall into a trap, don't walk into a trap, so I'm not going to fall into this trap. So the next question I would have had was, does that mean you're going or you're not going to go? What's the trap? They never asked him. So I don't know if he's going or not. But, I, I, you know, how many Democrats do you think will not show up? And what, what ramifications will that have uh, going forward? I think that, quite frankly, there's going to be most of them who will show up. You know, there may be members of the Black Caucus who have already announced that they didn't want to go, uh, that blockade or boycott the speech. But I don't think there's going to be a lot of absentees. I mean, Joe Biden is going to be elsewhere. So what? I mean, you're going to have a joint session of Congress. You're going to have a very powerful speech by Bibi Netanyahu, with Benjamin Netanyahu, the Israeli prime minister. And, you know, quite frankly, what we're seeing now is the Obama administration terrified about what he's going to say, because he's going to give a view of the Iranian nuclear negotiations that is never going to be a, a voiced by the Obama administration. He's going to give it to us pretty straight. And, you know, my only question is, did they need to do it that particular day? 
Probably not. But you know what? The die is cast. I want to hear this. I really want to pay attention to it because I think this may be this nuclear deal that Obama is coming up with. This is going to be the biggest national security danger facing the United States for the next 20 years. And if Obama goes yep. through with this deal and the Senate does not try to take it up and, and deny ratification to it, that is going to be a huge damage to us. Absolutely. Jed, thank you. Always good to talk to you, Jed Babin, ladies and gentlemen. When we come back, the executive editor of Newsbusters and uh, Media Research Center, of course, a media analyst, Tim Graham. Don't go away.